Good morning and greetings uh, in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this morning that we come again to worship God and the so this uh, is the privilege for me to speak and a very inspiring topic this morning and it's come to my mind and I've been preparing for the past one week and um, this moment the time that I feel that we need something from the Lord is what we need is power, right? We need the power of God and also not only powers that we also need what? Love. Power and love is important. So. When it talks about the, uh, when we see that the, in the world, let me tell you one story. Many years ago, when the China and India has a problems in the place called in Arunachal Pradesh, so when the when the Indian armies were there, there were few, not much people. Then by the time that they saw that the um, uh, the Chinese armies are thousands are coming and they're covering the place and they're attacking. And by the time that a man called one of the soldiers has a girlfriend, he has a girlfriend in the one Nepali girls, he fall in love. So he went to the, the Kuti, the, the village where the Nepali Kuti he went, and he was with his girlfriend. And he enjoyed because that he gave all his times in his life to his girlfriend, and he don't care about anything. And by the time that he said that people are dead, when he come back, he saw that all the Indian soldiers are already run away. They escaped. And so he brought a, he and his girlfriend came, and they saw that all the guns and the bombs, everything in the army came. And when they look at that, the Chinese um, armies are approaching to one India side. And he put in the trench and all that, he keep that all the guns in the line and he fires and the girl, his girlfriend was that carrying the guns and, and the bullet and the porters fighting. And the Chinese are hundreds of people dying. And the Chinese thought that, oh, India army is too much and they went back. And by the time this both of them and he stayed with, and he, with his girlfriend, he was uh, giving his life and he don't care anything. And his father in law went and tell to the Chinese, it is only my daughter and this her girl uh, her boyfriend only is there. So the Chinese came and they took him and cut his neck. And till today, if you go to Arunachal Pradesh, they call that Sila of her Opal. That she she went up and after they killed her boyfriend, she went to the mountain and jumped and suicide. That's called Sila Mountains. Where does she suicide? When love is there. Love is that sacrifice. Love is something that people give their life, willing to give. So this morning, I'm going to talk about the, the power of God's love. Please turn your Bible with me. Go First John, chapter 4, verse 1 to uh, 11 to 16. First John, chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. We're going to talk. <clears throat> Beloved, if God so loves us, we also how to love one another. 12. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abided in us, and His love has been perfect in us. 13. By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us, because He has given us of His Spirit. 14. And we have seen that testifying that the Father has sent the Son as a Savior of the world. 15. Whoever confessed that Jesus is the Son of God, God abided in Him, and He in God. 16. And we have known that the belief that love that God had for us. God is love, and He who abided in love abided in God, and God in Him. This is the scripture, the word of God, we are going to talk this morning. So here we see that the, um, I, the power of God, we see in the book of the Romans chapter 8 verse 35 that who can separate us from the love of God? So tribulation and perils of soul. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. So now here, this morning, in our, I highlighted the outline here, said that the power of God's love is unconditional love. The power of God's love is unconditional love. When it talks about the unconditional love, what is the unconditional love? If God so loves us, if 
we love one another. That if God so loved us, and if we love one another, you know, when God loved us so much, and then when we love, when we experience God's love, we love others also. That's the power of God's love is unconditional and things, unconditional. See that here, before we go into that, there are uh, things that we are going to see that the meanings. Now, the Hebrew words meaning of love. And it's so talking here, a different way we see that the Hebrew meanings. It's called that the first fruit of the Spirit is called that Priha Ruas, which means Priha Ruas, that the first fruit. And love means that Hava. The Hebrew word is called Hava. Or joy means that Simcha. And peace means that Salom. Or Salom. Salom. Patient means that Servant. And generosity is a part of life and giving. That's called that Nidibut Liv. And goodness means that Chesed. Faith is an Imuna. And humility is an Anava. And self control is that Hasni Leket. So now we see that when we say love in the Hebrew, the single word is called that Ahava. Ahava is called love. But they also that the, the construction said is that Ahavat, when it's the Hebrew is called Ahavat, mean that is a singular, but it's the construction states it talks about love. In the plural is called that Ahavat. The Hebrew words of that love is called Ahavat. Then also it's called Ahavat, which means that love. The, in Hebrew it talks about love. Now we also see again in the the New Testament meaning of love, and I want to see that they are. There are four Greek words which translate into to love. He is talking about. Number one is called that eros. Eros, which mean, which mean that sensual desires, desire or passion or attraction, all platonic love between boyfriend and girlfriend love is called eros, or which is that sensual or desires or passionate or attraction. When you show that a beautiful girl is that as a man, you have attraction, that is called that eros, that's love. And we also see that it's called that filio. So filio is used for the friendship love, like Jonathan and David. Jonathan and David in the Bible, they, are, they have a good relationship as a friend. That's called filio love, friendship love. Or family love, that husband and wife, they love each other, that is called that filios. Or a lawyer's love. And someone who is working for the kings or for the peoples who are very loyal, that is called that affiliate. Uh, and the third thing is that we see the storage. A family loves or that the parental love. So I love my children. So when I love my children, that is called that the historians or that acceptance love. And inviting someone, that is called that historians love. And the last one is called agape or agapo. Agape love is that the supernatural love that is called God's love, that is called unconditional love or true love, which we found in the first Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient, love is kind, and love is long suffering. Now, agape is love because of the character of a person loving rather than a worthiness of the object being love. It is also love is in spite of rather than love because of. Now, nothing's because of the person that, but you just love it. That's what exactly happened that God's love for us as the agape love. Now, the importance of love in the Bible, we see that how why love is so important is that in the Old Testament, we found the word love is found 131 times in the Old Testament. And we also see in the New Testament, love is found 310 times in the New King's Version. There are NSB, uh, New American Standard Version, NIV, they have, they have different numbers. But, in, we see in the New King James, we see one, 310 times. And in the book of 1 John, which we are going to discuss this morning, in the 1 John itself, we see that 46 times. And John is emphasizing about how important is love. How important is love. Then I also want to compare about that, what is the difference between biblical love and secular definition of love. Now, the, let's see that here. The secular love, let's see first here what the secular love talks about. L means that loss of money. Loss of money. 
and all means an hour of mind. Loss of money and hour of mind. Or V means a waste of times. You are wasting of your times. And E means end of life. You can die with your love. But on the other side, let's see that what the Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You say that love is what? Come on, church, tell me. Love is patient. patience. Love is patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy and it does not boast. It does not proud. It does not root. It is not self seeking, not for thinking for himself alone, but thinking for others. It is not easy to anger, okay? Not so angry. It, is, it keeps no records of wrongs, not remembering others doing wrongs, but forgiving. It does not delight in evils when others are that committing sin or doing bad, not to be happy. It rejoices with the truth. And love, the true love rejoice. And somebody get first mark. And suppose that the college students are, some of your friends are getting more high marks than that you are rejoicing. That is called a true love in the Bible. It is always, it always protects. Love protects. It always trusts. It always hope. It always preserves. Love never fails. This is what the biblical meanings of about love is that. Now, See with these that are you now let's go uh, see that they are outlined and, and discuss it what God is doing. So what is that the the power the powers of God's love is unconditional love. Let's come back to see that the scriptures passes verse eleven and say beloved if God is love us and we also ought to love one another. Now here is that coming up that unconditional love. You see that. Um, the scripture talks about unconditional love. Unconditional love here, I want to talk about the, the Greek words. The Greek word for unconditional love is there, ania, um, ani diotenis agape. Ania diotenis agape means the unconditional love in the Greek. Now, unconditional love makes sacrifice. Unconditional love makes sacrifice. Perhaps that we all we know is a well known passage. In the book of the John chapter 3 verse 16. What is that? John 3 16. For God so loved the world. And that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believed in him. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. That is unconditional love. It's God. Love is an unconditional love. So God's love is a far reaching. That he has sacrificed his own son. To pay the penalty for our sins. And God is making the bridge. You know the bridge, the gap between man, holy God and unholy peoples, that the bridge he made in because of his unconditional love. The holy God has made it. God has already made the ultimate sacrifice on the cross for our sin. And if we want to love others like God unconditionally, we need to sacrifice ourselves. Today I see that people are hating each other. People hate each other. Black and white. So people are in the black and white. Unconditionally people have that. So people in the black. In US we see that today that black life matters. Why not white life matters? Why not that pink life matters? And brown life matters? All our life are matters. So here we see that the unconditional love needs sacrifice. And that. Um, thank you. And others resource and love is for God's love for us. Now the next thing I want to talk about unconditional love is a gift, not earning. We didn't earn, we didn't get something to get unconditional. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 talks about, For by grace you are saved through faith in Jesus, and through faith as this is not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast it. So that is an unconditional love that is not we earn for our salvation is a gift of God. Now this here this is an extraordinary ordinary concept to consider that Jesus' death on the cross already paid our salvation. What we have seen in the past and present and the future already paid. That is unconditional love. So by paying the penalty for our sin. God show that is unconditional love. Then, unconditional love cannot be lost. It cannot be lost, unconditional love. 
What is that unconditional love cannot be lost here? The scripture talks about here. What is unconditional love cannot be lost? We see that in the <coughs> life of this here. Uh, we see it. unconditional. The prodigal son. We see the prodigal son. Now, we see that when these, uh, these prodigal sons plan to return to his fathers, he has three things to say. In verse uh, 18, he said, that, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. He come into realization, sense of repentance. And number two, he said that in verse 19, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. No, he humbled himself. I am no longer called to be called your son. And the third thing is that treat me as one of your higher servants. Make me one of your servants. He said in verse 19b, we see that. Now, this prodigal son went away from the father and destroyed and take all the things from his father. But still his father loved it. That love is called unconditional love. We see that in the scripture. We see in Romans here. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. What is said that? God loves us. God proved, God proved His uh, own love for us. In that while we were yet sinner, God demonstrated His love. While we were yet sinner, Christ died for our sin. Now, we see that when this prodigal son, still he was committing sin, he went away from his father, but his father has open arms. Because that his love is that. Here, the beautiful story, we see that God's love and that human, how God loved the human being. As a sinner, even in spite of our sinning, in spite of our arrogance, in spite of that we are forsaking, we run away from God. But still God loves us. And that's what we see that here, the Father loves. That's what the, the, we see in the scripture here, that unconditional love. Now, let's see again in the scriptures here. The 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 talks about our body is the temple of God. Now here what we learn, uh, we see that God's love transforms us. The Greek word, what is that transform mean? Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is called that the uh, transformations or transform. Metaform, uh, uh, metamorphosis is simply mean transformation or change or modifications or restructuring things. Restructuring or modification or change that is called um, the metamorphosis. That is what transformation is. That now, when we see that this transformation, we see here the scripture talks about we when we were have received God unconditional love, we are admonished through the scriptures. We see in the Bible that we have to be being loved by God in John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35, say, and you. Commandment I give to you, love one another as I loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. If you love one another, God said that you will be my disciple. People will know that you are my disciples. Now, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 39 say, Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and soul. The commandment, say, what is said here, is that this is the first and the greatest commandment is that love the Lord your God with all your heart and your mind. That's the first commandment. So we see that that love transforms us. That what that love transforms us, it made us to love our God with all our heart and our mind and our soul. Leave everything. That Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself or herself and carry the cross. And he also said that if someone wants to follow and plow the field, hold the plowing and looking back is an unworthy to be called my disciples. Now we see here the scripture said in the second say that love your neighbor yourself. Son. Love your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. That is the greatest and the first commandment. The second commandment is that love your neighbor as yourself. It is that, what is that? 
Now when you have, when you are born again, when you accept Jesus Christ, when you know God, you are having love. Why today we hate each other? Because of our color? Because of our position that we are low people? You know, one of the jokes in the cookies, uh, comedies, Imam said that Children, the big boys are looking at us and they beat us. You know, what it mean? Sometimes the strong people look down and, and uh, exploit the weak people. Is it this is what love we experience? Is it this transformation? The day when we accept Jesus Christ, we are transformed. We are new persons. When we are new persons, we live in newness of life. And how we get that power of inspiration and transformation is that because God sent His Son to die on the cross for our sin. Because God sent His Holy Spirit live in us. When the Holy Spirit live in us, then we walk according to the Spirit, not according to our own will. And that gave us hopes. That gave us hopes. And because that we become the temple of the living God. We become the temple of the living God. We see here. Now, when it talks about this uh, transformation, what it means transformation is that in the life of transformation, you see that this is what the actual happening in the transformation is that here we see that this is the only that the caterpillars that become in a beautiful butterfly. That is called the Bible talks about transformation, change of life. This is what change of life, and the Bible talks about transformation in our life. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, this morning I want to talk about. Are you transformed in your life? Or you are still thinking that you are white and he's black and he is a Chinese and he's a Nordic and he's an Indian. So there are divisions among us. Or the rich and he's rich and he's poor. When a person is transformed, you see that only a canker woods on this a caterpillar is a change and become a beautiful butterfly. We all are sinners. We are in the clutches of sin. There is no beauty in human being. There is no beauty in each one of our life. But the day we accept Jesus Christ, the moment that we come to know Jesus Christ is the true God, and the moment that you accept Jesus Christ, that heaven is open for you, and you become a new person in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is called transformation. That is called transformation. The power of God changed. The power of God transform us. God, the power of God's love transform us. When Jesus Christ demonstrated His love and He died for our sin, then we are transformed when we believe Jesus Christ. That's called transformations in life. <clears throat> so here we see that the third thing is what we are Okay. The third point I like to talk this morning is that the power of God's love give us confidence. The powers of God's love give us the confidence. Let's read the scripture again in verse five, 15 on 1 John chapter 4 verse 15 and 16. Yeah. And verse 15 says that whoever confess that Jesus is the Son of God and God abided in him and he in God. God is in us and we are in God. Depositing to each other. And that's when God is in you and you are in God, you are going to have confidence because that God with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. And verse 16 talks about, and we know that, and we have known that the believers, the love that God had for us, and God is love. And he who abided in love, abide in God, and God in him. That is what we see that the power of God's love gave us confidence. How we gain our confidence that when we confess that Jesus is our God. When we confess the moment when you accept Jesus Christ. The moment you confess that Jesus Christ is God. Then you are having confidence in Him. And you see that if you believe God is love, He is in you. That, that's what makes that make and change our life 
and things in what happened in the, the things. Then our confidence. When he talks about our confidence, let's see it here. The scripture talks about here. And we see that the perfect, and here the perfect way that we see that, that confidence. What is that confident? The Greek word is called confident, is called that pepoitesis. Okay, pepoitesis is that mean confidence. Our confidence in God. Pepoitesis means that confident, trust, reliance, and trustiness, or that confidence. That is called that pepoitesis. That's confidence. Now, what is it our confidence we have in that? Do we have going to our relationship with God? How we are growing in our relationship with God? Are you growing relationship with God deeper? Now, the climax of the marriage life. The climate of marriage life is that when one boys and girls, they fall in love with each other. They don't just get married with each other. But they build up their relationship day, weeks, month and years. When they say they build their confidence and relationship, finally they say yes. He is the person. She is the person. Then they get married. The same way that to become a mature Christian, we need to build our relationship with God every day of our life. Then you will have your confidence in God. So confidence or courage come from the Lord. In the first Samuel chapter 17, verse 45 to 46, we see that the life of David. The life of David, we see that how that they see that. So the their confidence. The confidence in the powers of God's love we see here. What is it here? We see that in the first Samuel chapter 17, verse 45 to 46. Now David said to Goliath, You are coming with a sword and with the battles, but I come in the name of the Almighty God, Yahweh God. The confidence what he had is in God's love and God's power, the power of God. Now this is small tiny boys and this is giants. A giant. We did possible that these two can fight each other. Unless that David has that is something confidence in someone powerful person, he can't use it. But now in we see that the scriptures say that you come with the sword and the seal and with the guards, but I come in the name of the Almighty God. That his confidence is in the power of God's love. Now David put his thing and he threw the stones and that the thing, the stone went into his forehead and the giants fell down and fled it and David slaughtered him. That is where our confidence in the power of God's love, my friend. That is talking about that the point is serious. confidence, our trust and our reliance is that in So confidence, we see that confident only when you are sure when you are doing for example, the students in the school, when you study well, when you are prepared well, that you are very excited for your exam, right? Because you know the answer. You know the answer. You are excited. And you know you are going to pass. That makes you confidence. When you study well, give you confidence to, in the exam hall. But when you don't study well, you are fear and you don't have your confidence. But here we see that I'm talking about the power of God's love. Give us confidence is that because Jesus died for sin, and the day you believe Jesus Christ, you have a confidence in who is the Almighty God, the Creator of the universe, is going to do a great things. Because of your salvation, you have confidence. Because of your salvation, you have confidence, my friends. So when we, uh, when we are transformed and when we have confidence and when we have that the unconditional love, God's love motivates us to keep His commandments and God's love helps us to can love others. God's love helps us to love others also. Then we become that God's agent to change people with, yours, with, our, uh, with our life and taking each day to give love and love can give us many different ways. 
as we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is long suffering. Love does not boast itself. And love walks and never fail. God's love never fail. God's power is that unlimited. Our power is limited. So this morning, as we talk about, my friend, that the power of God's love, are you experiencing that? If you have that God's love and God's power is in your life, you are going to have that unconditional love you are going to experience. You are going to have the transformation in life. You are going to have that confidence. Are you having that un experience condition, unconditional love? Are you experiencing that transformation in your life? Are you experiencing confidence in your life? Or you are still scared and timid? So we see that here the scripture talks about, my friends, no matter that what kind of people, you may be in America, you are white, you may be black, you may be Native Americans, you may be Indians, you may be Nordic peoples, and you may be Asians and Chinese, doesn't matter. We all are going to stand before the just man of God one day in the last. The Bible says that, I saw the dead small and great standing before God for just men. That's way to win soul and to plant church is very important for us. That is the urgency of missions in our life. To accomplish in our life, to reach hundreds of peoples for God's love. Then we are going to fulfill the powers of God's love in your life. May God bless each one of us in this morning. And to have the power of God. So we pray. God, we thank you and praise you for this.